the summaries of chapters 17, 18, and 19 of the Lotus Sutra are pretty straightforward. Um, reading from the descriptions in the preface to Hervis's uh, translation of the Lotus Sutra. He says that in chapter 17, the Buddha narrates the merit which shall accrue to those who venerate the foregoing chapter of the Lotus, telling of the unlimited nature of the Buddha's lifespan. And then in chapter 18, there's more on the merit accruing to one who extols the Lotus. And in chapter 19, more on the same. So the thing to emphasize here is the tremendous focus on chapter 16 of the Lotus Sutra, the chapter on the eternal life of the Buddha. This is the chapter in which the teaching is presented to us in apparent contradiction to the earlier teachings within Buddhism of the notion of Sakyamuni Buddha being a man who lived a life and then died. This chapter 16 tells us that at another level, the Buddha exists forever as a source of support and comfort for us human beings. Um, this um, chapter is part of what inspired me to do the stupa area out in the woods next to my home. If you're interested in that, you can see the last video um, in which I um, talked about the uh, and showed the, the the rocks that I had sandblasted with various uh, references to the 16th chapter of the Lotus Sutra. Again, this is the chapter that, um, if we have faith in it, helps us appreciate the fact that um, however we may name this force within the universe, that there is a force of compassion within the universe that accepts us just as we are. And then going on to chapter 20, Hervitz says more on the same, namely benefits accruing to those who embrace the Lotus Sutra, followed by the Buddha's narration of his own behavior in a previous era in which as the Bodhisattva Sada Paribhuta, which in a more um, understandable English form, this Bodhisattva is called the Bodhisattva Never Despise, um, in which, again, Sakyamuni describes supposedly in a previous era, he was the Bodhisattva, never despised, that he was the object of much contempt and violence, but responded to all actions with love and patience. I'll just um, reference here again the, the six paramitas or perfections, the six practices of the Bodhisattva. And uh, one of those is kshanti or patience. So it's kind of uh, an expression of a twofold teaching in, in some sense is that the Bodhisattva never despised by explicitly saying to those around him that he would never despise them and that they would all attain Buddhahood uh, is expressing the compassion that reflects the um, one of the key attributes of the of the cosmic Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. But then again, when, when some of the monks and lay people at that time are arrogant and um, basically verbally and even physically abuse him for, for making these statements, he responds with extreme patience. He does not get angry, uh, which reflects this um, paramita of kashanti or patience, which is the the polar opposite of being frustrated, irritated, angry, enraged, which is so easy for us humans to experience as we react to various much much more minor frustrations within our own lives. And of course, uh, what happens then because of the merit, I suppose you could say, associated with this Bodhisattva never despises practices, is that he then 
um, gets to the point where he, his lifetime is extended and he has the opportunity to embrace and, and read and recite and preach the Lotus Sutra. So it all comes back to touting the uh, supreme value and efficacy as what Hervitz has translated the title being the scripture of the Lotus Flower of the Fine Dharma or the Lotus Sutra. Namo Mita Bodhis.